All right, so now we're in the linked list class that you all have. Um, and so there is some structure, some comments here, and we're gonna basically fill in the code that goes with it. Um, we're gonna write a linked list that is similar, but a little bit simplified from the actual Java standard library one. Um, and I'll, I'll point out the things we're doing to simplify our life as we do it. Um, some of those simplifications we'll get rid of when we move on to the um, maze lab, the summative lab later in this chapter. Um, but I don't want to complicate things too much right here at the beginning. So reviewing from chapter 15, a linked list is an ordered sequence um, of elements. When we start talking about the implementation of a linked list, we have to be very careful to distinguish between two different terms. From an implementation perspective, a linked list is a sequence of nodes, okay? So node is a new term. Um, and in fact, we're about to write the node class. When the user of a linked list knows nothing about nodes, the word node, the type node, doesn't show up anywhere in the public interface of the linked list class. The fact that we model a linked list with a node is an internal implementation detail, but it's critical now for us to understand that because we're implementing the linked list. So I'm gonna to try to be very careful with my terminology. And when I'm referring to the internal data structure within the linked list class, we'll talk about the node and the element will always refer to the thing that the user adds to the linked list. So if I have a linked list of turtles, the element would be the turtle objects. Um, and the node would be the internal object that we use to, to actually implement the linked list. Okay. Um, so let's focus on this node first. So we need some object that like wraps around the element that the user adds that helps us implement the linked list and basically keeps track of the links, the very thing that makes the linked list a linked list. So if we scroll down here, there's a comment that says class node. We're gonna write the, the node class first. And this is gonna be an inner class. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this type node doesn't show up anywhere in the public linked list interface. There's no reason for any other class to use it. It's completely internal to this linked list class and therefore doing it um, as a static inner class is a good implementation strategy. So we're gonna create a static class node. I will share um, a link to some, like an extension documentation on like what does static mean for a class? Um, that's not something that we've seen before. Um, we do it for efficiency. Um, and, and if you're curious about that, I will add that as a extension link for you. Um, but it's gonna be more efficient by making this a static inner class. Um, and our node class is gonna be super simple. All the node class is gonna be for now is two instance variables. Because this is an inner class, no one else is gonna use it but us in the linked list class. We're gonna make our instance variables public. And the first one is gonna be of type object and we're gonna call it data. That's the data of the node. That's gonna be a reference to the element. The second instance variable is gonna be public and its type is gonna be node and it's a reference to the next node in the list. So what we're implementing here is what we refer to as a single linked list, meaning each node can get to the next node, but it can't get to the previous node, okay? So we're simplifying things a little bit. In the Java standard library, the linked list class is a doubly linked list. So there'd be a next and a previous instance variable. We're not gonna worry about that complexity right now. The other simplification we're making is that when we made a new linked list in chapter 15, that class was a generic class. It had the angle brackets. Inside that angle bracket, we specified the type of the element. We're not gonna write this as a generic right now. Um, we've never written a generic class before, so we're gonna wait until later in this chapter to introduce that concept. Our linked cl list class, the elements are always gonna be of type object, which means it could be any class. Um, and we'll just have to cast it after we get the thing out of the linked list to whatever it is, if it's a string, a turtle, whatever. 
So those are some simplifications we're making. Singly linked list, everything is just of type object. This is fine for now. And in fact, before Java 5, this is how the linked list class looked. Um, there were no generics, so. All right, so that is our node class. So it's a private inner class. We have public instance variables. Data is a reference to the element. All right, let's look at the next piece. Now that we've defined this class, we can scroll back up to the top and start building out our linked list class. Um, we need an instance variable. Let's add a comment explaining this instance variable. Um, actually, let's define the instance variable and then we'll add the comment. So our instance variable is gonna be private. Um, we don't want anyone outside of this class to access it. It's gonna be of type node and we're gonna call it first. So first refers to the first node in this list. If the list is empty, first is null. This is kind of neat in a way. The only instance variable we need in the linked list class is one a reference to the first node in the list because if we know where the first node is we can find all the other nodes so all we need is a reference to the first node in the list so that's cool all right so let's now that we have our one and only instance variable let's work our way through the different methods that we need to actually have a linked list let's start with the constructor so I already wrote the java.comment for you here, constructs an empty linked list. So we have to write a constructor, public, the name of the class is linked list. And the implementation of this is we want it to be empty. So we'll say this.first equals, based on what we've documented so far, what do we assign to the instance variable first for an empty linked list? No. That's it, not so bad. Let's just work our way through the methods. So here's a, an accessor method. It returns the first element in the linked list. So we're gonna, this will be a public method. Now, the, again, terminology is really important. It returns the first element in the linked list. It does not return the first node in the linked list. We would never want a public method to refer to a node because a node is something completely private and internal to the linked list class. So when we say it returns the first element in the linked list, the return type of this method needs to be the type of the element. And since we're not writing this as a generic class, the type of our element is just object and our method's gonna be called get first, just like it was in the standard Java library, Java standard library linked list class. In general, we want a line of code something like this, return this.first.data. Again, we can't say return this.first because that would return a reference to the node. We need to return a reference to the element so we have to say this.first.data. What is problematic about the implementation of the get first method? Yeah, I, yeah, if first is null, we're gonna get an exception. We're gonna get a null pointer exception. What's that? Can we have it? Well, we want to try to, that's a great question. Is it okay if it throws an exception? Um, and the linked list class, the Java standard library version linked list class does throw exceptions, but we want the exceptions to be meaningful. So yes, it's okay to throw an exception, but it would not be appropriate in this case to throw a null pointer exception. We want to throw an exception that mirrors um, what the Java standard library would do. So we do need to add some additional code for that. So we need to check if the list is empty. So if this.first equals null, Yes, we want to throw an exception because that's what the Java standard library does. And 
and we've never written code to throw exceptions before. This is kind of exciting. The keyword we use is throw. Okay. So think of it as like you're throwing an exception. Um, you can think of it as kind of like you're throwing an exception on the call stack and someone's going to eventually catch it. And if no one catches it, then eventually the Java runtime catches it and your program crashes. Um, but hopefully someone else catches it and handles it before then. So when we throw an exception, an exception is an object. Um, so we need to actually create a new object and we're going to actually then throw that new object. So we're going to say throw new and rather than throwing a null pointer exception, the appropriate exception in this case is called a no such element exception. If you were to call get first on a linked list you create from the Java standard library and that list is empty, it would throw a no such element exception. So we're emulating that behavior. So this is how we throw exceptions. Throw new no such element exception. Otherwise, we'll just return this dot first dot data. Let's let's skip remove for a second and let's look at add. I should reverse those in my in my notes. Um, and Let's look at a picture. Here is a picture of inserting a node into a linked list. Okay. Um, this is right from your textbook. We are building our linked list in the same way. This square, rectangle, whatever, represents our linked list object. It has a single instance variable first, which is a reference to another object, a node object. So these little arrows are meant to represent our references. So here's a node. Um, and so let's say in our linked list, the first node currently is this one and it's data. The element is the string Diana. And then next goes to some other new node, some other node. We want to insert a new node. Um, so let's say the user specified the string Amy and we want to insert that element into our the beginning of our linked list. The implementation for this is not, the implementation is rather straightforward. What's going on I think is somewhat complicated. So we're going to have to create a new node object and assign the string Amy to the data. And then we have to fix up our links. A lot of what we're gonna be doing in the beginning here of chapter 16 is just adjusting our links to make our linked list work the way we want. So if we want this new node to be the first node, we have to change a couple of links. And the order in which we do it is really important, okay? So once we, first, we're gonna create a new node. Second, for that new node, its next instance variable needs to be assigned to what was the first node in the list. We have to fix this link first. This link here, this reference, is currently stored in first, right? So that's where we can get it from. And then the third and final step is to change first to refer to the new node. The order is important. If we try to switch two and three, it's not going to work. If we update first to refer to the new node, and then we try to update next to refer to this one, we've lost it. We don't know where Diana is. It's, it's like we lost any references to it. So the order in which we update our links is very important. So we have to be very deliberate with that. So there's a picture, a visual of what we're trying to do. Let's turn this into a few lines of code. So public void add first is the same method that is in the Java standard library. The user specifies a single parameter, which is the element to add. In our case, that's gonna be of type object. We're gonna do each of the three steps we just saw in the diagram. Step one, we're gonna create a new node. And we're gonna assign that to a local variable, new node. 
also, I guess, part of step one is a node has two instance variables, data and next. We're going to initialize data to element. Okay, so the node refers to the element that the user is adding. That's step one. I'll put a little comment here. Step two is to update for the new node, update the next instance variable to refer to what was the first node in our list. So this dot first refers to the first node in the list. We now want our new node's next node to be what that first node. And then step three says this dot first is going to be updated to new node. We have a new first node in our list and it is new node. We cannot swap stop steps two and three though. That is not going to work. When we're implementing these data structures, it's really important to think of the boundary conditions. What I mean by that is like, what if the list is empty? Do we need to have special code like we wrote up here for get first? Do we need special code in add first to handle the case of the list being empty? Thoughts on that? Let's I see. I see some people shaking their heads. So we're just going to see what they think too. Hmm. So you're saying, so Connor, you correctly identified this dot first will be null. Yeah. And Ronith, you're saying we're going to just simply that means this line of code will be new node dot next equals null, which is fine. So I think it, so you're both right in that it's going to still be okay. We, we could, we also, we're going to try to, as we implement these data structures, keep like performance in mind. Yeah. So we're going to try not to cover like edge cases that we don't have to and add extra conditionals we don't have to. It would totally work that way. Absolutely. Um, but this is going to be fine. So even if this dot first is null, everything's going to be okay. We're just going to assign null to new node dot next. The technique I use to answer that question of like, do we need to handle a special case if the list is empty? The, my thought process is if the list is empty, that means first is null. So then I scan through this method and I look to see if we're ever using, if we're ever um, referencing an instance variable of first. So if I scan through here, it's okay if I see this dot first referenced here. What would not be okay is if I saw something like, this dot first dot next, that would set off the alarm bells. Like, hey, that's going to be a null pointer exception if first is null. Okay, so that's what you should scan through your code as you're trying to decide if there's an edge case we have to handle. All good? Cool. Um, I think we could do one more method. Yeah. Perfect. Let's look at removing. Here's a picture for removing a node. Okay. So Amy is the first element in our list. Diana is the second element of the list. In our linked list object, first refers to the node that is referring to Amy. Next refers to the node that's referring to Diana. Next refers to some other node, whatever it happens to be. 
if we want to remove the first node in the list, we're going to remove the node referencing Amy, we need to fix up our links, okay? And actually removing the first element in the linked list is relatively straightforward because all we have to do is have first refer to the node referencing Diana, and then we're no longer referencing Amy, and Java's garbage collector is just going to clean up that node and get rid of it, um, and we don't have to worry about it. So removing a node is easier than adding one. We just have one link we need to adjust. We just have to get to we just have to get this reference <coughs> to the node um, that is referring to Diana. And so I think these diagrams are helpful because then you can ask yourself, well, how do we get the reference to Diana when all we have to start with is first, right? So you can use this diagram to kind of like conceptually reason through it. If I start with first, that gets me to here. If I do first.next, that gets me to here, and that's where I want to be. So the way I get this reference to Diana is first.next, and that gets me to Diana. So let's see what that looks like in terms of code. I'm going to scroll up a little bit because I put these in an odd order. Public. Object remove first. We need the element. Oh, because the remove method returns a reference to the element. We may remember that from chapter 15. So let me grab the element first. This.first.data refers to the element that we're going to eventually return. But I better hold it now in a local variable before I lose track of that node. So I'll store that in a local variable. And then here is step one, this.first equals this.first.next. There's the reference in the example to Diana. We now will say the first node in the linked list is that one. And then we can just say return element. Absolutely. Exactly. So if the list is empty, this.first is null. So this would be a null pointer exception. This would be a null pointer exception. So we better check for that. If this.first is null, row new, no such element exception. That's the appropriate exception to throw in this case. This is cool. We have just implemented a singly linked list where we can add elements, remove elements. Um, that's like a nice subset of the Java standard library linked list class. What we'll do on Monday is we will write our own linked list iterator, which is how we normally operate with linked lists thinking back to chapter 15. So we'll do the iterator on Monday.